thank you for coming. Um, my name is Kambiz Ghanabasiri. I'm an associate professor of religion and humanities. I teach Islam at the college. Um, <clears throat> and um, along with um, Stephanie Snyder, one of the co-creators of the Qalam exhibition at the gallery, which I hope you had a chance to see. Um, tonight's lecture by Dr. Hanidazad Delichani is part of a number of projects that the Cooley Gallery has sponsored alongside the exhibition. And I'm going to just, I wanted to just mention these by way of thanking the people who have been involved uh, in them and have made tonight possible. Uh, the Talam exhibition features works by our speaker, uh, Dr. Gilich Khani, uh, as well as a few historical uh, miniatures and works of calligraphy that were generously loaned to the college by the San Francisco Asian Art Museum. The exhibit also features <coughs> excuse me, a number of folios from the private collection of one of our alumni, Stephen Harold. Uh, Stephen has loaned these items uh, to the exhibition and has, yeah, and he generally, generously intends to gift them to the college. Uh, so thank you, Stephen. Um, Dr. Darius Rajali from the Political Science Department has also generously lent the exhibition a number of objects from his private collection uh, that capture the variety of practices associated with calligraphy in Iran. Um, the college and the gallery also sponsored five Arabic calligraphy workshops in February and March. Um, I'm delighted to see a number of students from that workshop here. Um, these were taught by Dr. Gilichani and were open to the public. The reception from students and the wider Portland community was overwhelmed us. Um, after our first session, we, during our first session, we ran out of reed pens and ink. Uh, Gregory McNaughton, uh, the Cooley Gallery's calligraphy initiative coordinator, ably managed all the logistics for these workshops. Thank you, Gregory. Um, I've also been working with Dr. Gilichani to set up a website titled Masterpieces of Persian Calligraphy. Um, this website is intended as a portal to the study of calligraphy in Iran. And like a lot of works on Arabic and Persian calligraphy or Islamic calligraphy um, that begin with some sort of general principle about Islamic calligraphy or Arabic calligraphy and abstract and certain abstractions about, these, about calligraphy more generally, this website aims to introduce the craft and art of calligraphy by beginning with individual objects and artists and working its way out. Uh, one of our graduates, Anna Cooper, has been coordinating that project, and I'd like to express my gratitude to her um, and the people in the, in the um, computing services and the library, uh, Angie, who's also here, uh, for helping us with that project. As a member of the faculty, I also would like to thank the staff of the gallery, Stephanie Snyder, its director, Elizabeth Bedard, who has been a uh, visiting assistant curator for this exhibition, Colleen Gotts, the gallery registrar, um, in addition um, to Gregory mentioned earlier, um, like all good things, uh, the germ of this exhibition was in an idea that snowballed into what you see today. When Stephanie approached me a couple of years ago about the possibility of bringing a professional calligrapher to read, I had no idea what to expect. Uh, as an academic, I'm used to working with a budget. I'm used to people telling me, you know, these are your resources, finding out what my sources are, and then figuring out how to maximize them. I explicitly remember Stephanie saying, what would you like to do? And I was completely dumb, dumbfounded. I'm like, what do you mean, what do I like to do? <laughs> what's possible? Can you tell me what's possible? <laughs> um, and she and the staff of the gallery ably worked together, um, given her magical curatorial powers. Oops. Um, uh, to bring the to bring the exhibition to fruition, and I'm deeply um, uh, uh, in, uh, appreciative of the, all the effort and energy that has gone into this. Um, and consequently, I've been able to teach a class alongside the exhibit. If you've, uh, alongside the exhibition, and if you've seen the exhibition, you might have seen the classroom um, in the gallery. Students in that class have all participated in the workshops that I mentioned. Uh, they have written labels for some of the pieces and are in the process of putting a booklet together for the exhibition. Um, it has been one of the, this has been one of the most rewarding teaching experiences of my career. So again, a big heartfelt thank you to Stephanie, Greg, Elizabeth, and Colleen. Uh, I would also like to express my gratitude to members of the Religion Department and the Office of the Dean of the Faculty at Reed for sponsoring and facilitating Dr. Glitchani's visit. 
I also would like to thank um, the American Institute for Iranian Studies, whose senior fellowship for Iranian scholars made Dr. Glichani's visit to read uh, both financially and logistically possible. It's not very easy to bring a scholar under current political circumstances from Iran to the United States. Without any further ado, I hope I haven't forgotten anyone. If I have, forgive me. Uh, let me now introduce tonight's lecture. Dr. Hamidrza Khilichani is a prominent Iranian calligrapher and one of the foremost scholars of calligraphy, uh, the calligraphic arts in Iran today. I had the pleasure of meeting him through a mutual friend in India. I was doing research for a book project on mosques and he kindly guided me to resources and took me on a tour of some key sites in Delhi. And just to give you a, a, a sense of the shortcomings of us American academics, um, he, he told me about this one mosque that's completely covered by Quranic inscriptions. And he said, there's just one line in that mosque that's Persian. And there's no way I would have ever recognized this if I had gone there by myself. Because you go there and you're completely overwhelmed by the calligraphy. And there's no way I would have read through all of them, had the patience to read through all of them to recognize that there's just one tiny line that, that, that's, in, that's in Persian. Uh, we had many lively exchanges, and I've learned a lot from them. And I quickly formed a desire to find an opportunity to collaborate on a project with them. And the website that I mentioned is a project, is, is an important outcome of that. And I'm again grateful for um, everyone I mentioned who, who uh, allowed me to realize this possibility. Dr. Varachwani is currently the executive director of Pars Institute and Art Gallery in Iran. But he began his career formally studying the Nastaliq and Sols or Tholf script with such masters as Ghulam Hussein Amir Khani and Muhammad Hussein uh, uh, Mubahad. He later turned his attention to the study of literature and went on to, do, uh, to complete his uh, PhD at Delhi University. He's unique in, ter in terms of being one of the few Iranian scholars who specializes in Persian literature outside of Iran. He has taught calligraphy in Persian literature at a number of universities, including the famous Amir Kabir University in Tehran and the University of Delhi. He also served as the head of the calligraphy department in the Iranian Academy of Arts. He has authored numerous books and articles, many of which are key references in the field. His efforts in producing dictionaries and historical introductions to calligraphy are all innovative and seem to be aimed at revivifying the study of Persian calligraphy in Iran, whereas we will hear tonight the actual practice of calligraphy itself is, a, is flourishing as an art. Unsurprisingly, many of Dr. Khani's works have gone through several printings in Iran. One of his um, earlier works, uh, A Dictionary of Calligraphy and Related Arts, has been translated into English and is forthcoming from Hebrew publications. Dr. Rilchani came to us from Tehran via Cambridge University, where he was on a fellowship working on manuscripts of Ferdowsi's Shahnameh. While in the US, he has lectured or will be lecturing at a number of universities, including University of Chicago, mm -hmm. University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, Harvard University, and George Washington University. And I'm told that when he visits these weird places, everyone asks, why are you in Portland? Read? Where is that? <laughs> um, we are honored to have him here with us tonight. So please help me welcome him to the stage. Thank you. Siri, my dear friend and uh, specialist on Islamic studies, who invited me and uh, arranged the schedule. And uh, I wish to especially thank director of uh, Cooley Gallery, Stephanie Snyder, and uh, I want to <coughs> thank all of you for coming today. Well, we start uh, with more subtitles about uh, Persian calligraphy in contemporary time. Uh, 
I start uh, with a glance at the past. Kufik was the first script in the Islamic world which spread from China to Spain. This script possessed the most <coughs> diverse alphabet and had a West application from the Quran and coins to inscriptions, etc. From the early 10th century onward, other scripts were created and Kufic was gradually substituted by them. Six famous scripts which prevailed uh, in Arabic countries and Iran were Nas, Souls, Muhaqqaq, Rayhan, Tawqi, and Reqa. Taliq uh, from the 13th century on board, a special script became prevalent uh, in Iran. It was known as Taliq. In all treatises, <coughs> it is mentioned that Iranian created this script from Turkey and Rega, two kinds of six styles of calligraphy. For inscribing Persian texts, the Talir script was chiefly used in court documents and correspondence because shikast Talir, shikast means broken in Persian, was not legible enough. This was the same with Kufi script which case it to be substituted by Nas. Talib has a special importance as the basis of the two principal scripts now in use in Iran, namely Nas Talib and Shekhast Nas Talib. Modern Persian calligraphers have little knowledge of Talib and use it only occasionally. The Shekhast Talib script remained in fashion in Persian government and judicial offices <coughs> for several centuries. From the early 16th century onward, it lost ground to uh, the increasingly popular Nastalir and Shekhast Nastalir scripts, but it continued to be used until the 19th century. Murtaza Abdul Rasuli, who wrote the inscriptions for the mausoleum of Omar Khayyam at Neshabur. This image. For the mausoleum of Omar Khayyam at Neshabur, wrote the poems on the time working Shekhast Talib instead of Tholos, conventionally uh, used uh, on tiles. After Talib, it's uh, Nas Talib, just as in the case of Kufik, Talib was substituted by Nas Talib, the second Persian script. There are two established theories concerning the script of Nas Talib. The first one uh, claims <coughs> that the script is combination of two other scripts, Nas and Talib. And the second one suggests uh, that the uh, prevalence uh, of this script, Nas Ta'liq, put an end to Ta'liq. In the second half of the 14th century, another script called the Nas Ta'liq from Nas and Ta'liq, which combined the well-balanced and nice-looking Nas script with Ta'liq developed in Iran. This script did not have to be written quickly like Nas and was free from the shortcoming of Ta'liq. The regularity, firmness, and graceful flourishes <coughs> of Nas Ta'liq make it very pleasing to the eye. 
in some surviving Ta'liq manuscripts from the 13th century, a gradual shift toward Nasaliq is already apparent. Moreover, uh, from the beginning of the 14th century, the Persian style Nas, uh, which was the ordinary medium of handwriting in that period, underwent changes the gradually brought it nearer to Ta'liq and ultimately gave it a resemblance to Nas Ta'liq. Although most authorities, including Sultan Ali Mashhadi, state that Nas Ta'liq was invented by Mir Ali Tabrizi, died 1401 CE. This does not appear to be correct. It may be taken for certain, however, uh, that Mir Ali Tabrizi, son of Hassan, systematized and gave Nas Ta'liq its definitive shape. It's an <clears throat> example of primitive, primitive, and it's another kind. <clears throat> uh, it's so beautiful by Mir Ali al Kateb from Herat. It's uh, another kind, the third and the last one, Shekaste Nastali. Shekaste means broken. The increasing uh, use of Nastali and consequent need to write it quickly exposed it to a process of gradual attrition. The Shekaste Nastali, which emerged in the early 15th century, and spread uh, in the later uh, Safavid period consequently differed uh, from <coughs> proper Nasali only in so far as some of the letters were shrunk and detached uh, letter, letters and words uh, were sometimes joined. Manuscripts from this period show signs of the influence of Shekhas Ta'liq while having the uh, appearance of uh, shrunken form of Nas Ta'liq. They also contain uh, features of Ta'liq because they were written by scribes who had been trained in Ta'liq. The pro <coughs> product of this mixture came to be known simply as shekaste, and being more easily legible than talib, it gradually replaced the letter as the script of the crease and documents, and later also came into use for writing books, poems, albums, etc. Certain features of shekaste can be traced back to experimental uh, device, tafannun, used by scribes of fools, to ornamental <coughs> letters, letter shapes found in Rayhan and Muhaqqab, and to decorative styles of uh, secretarial. Secretarial means uh, tarasul in Arabic. Nastali, used in official documents of the Safavid and Taimurid period. After this, we go to Pahlavi period. It's two part, uh, Reza Shah and uh, his son, Muhammad Reza Shah, second Pahlavi. From about two decades uh, before Reza Shah reign, <coughs> calligraphy was in danger of being abolished. In addition to the difference of king and pattern, patterns, uh, another reason was <coughs> prevalence of the print industry. Even though the leaden print industry uh, had begun in Iran around the 1818 CE, the most famous calligrapher 
in Iran who was trained uh, in the Qajar period was Muhammad Hussein Kazvini. He was surnamed Imad al Kutab, 1861 to 1960-1936, and was the master of Muzaffaruddin Shah, Ahmad Shah, and some other Qajar princes. Among the most important happenings in his life was his entrance into the punishment committee. After joining this committee, Muhammad Hussein started disturbing uh, anonymous protest letters. After he was discovered, he was <coughs> arrested and uh, sentenced uh, to five years in jail. It's an uh, example of uh, his Siyah Mash in prison. And it's uh, another one. Islamic uh, Republic period. After Islamic Republic, <coughs> calligraphy was uh, to a large extent a popular art in all levels of society. In the first 15 years after the Iranian Revolution, calligraphy classes were the most chosen and desired art classes. As well as writing on paper, it was used for writing on walls and on banners for martyrs, martyrs uh, placards, and so on. The Iran Calligraphers Association played an important part in uh, those years and educated thousands of students. We can see <coughs> population of Iran uh, up to now and the distinguished degree and calligrapher <coughs> student, masters, and uh, more than them, uh, branches of Iran Calligraphers Association. Traditional calligraphy. It's uh, <coughs> so uh, huge, uh, but just uh, I speak about inscriptions and uh, forgery. It's a, uh, an example of souls inscriptions uh, from Safavid period. <coughs> this time the calligraphers uh, in traditional calligraphy just can do like this. One of them, Sad uh, Muwahid, <coughs> it's a work of him. It's so similar to Safavid period because it's just traditional calligraphy. He's the best calligrapher in the Thul's style. 